news as the U.S. roster for the upcoming Nations League was just announced. So let's break this thing down, starting with the forward position. Obviously, some notable names there. The one that stands out to me, though, Falarian Balogun. Yeah, he, he just announced his decision to become a U.S. international, scored a ton of goals in the French League, uh, an Arsenal product, just an all-around fantastic player. Overjoyed to have him as an American international. Cannot wait to see him in the colors. Yeah, we'll get a quick check to see what he can do. It's not going to waste very much time yeah. with that. Okay, moving on to the midfield. Obviously, Tyler Adams is missing from this group. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. But this could be an opportunity here for Gio Reyna. Yeah, we've, we've heard a lot about his name and not in the most positive light surrounding mm -hmm. the U.S. men's national team in the last few months. It's great to see him back in the fold. A very strong midfield group. Love to see Yunus Musa. I think we'll maybe see him move this summer to another club out of Valencia. But Gio Reyna back in the fold. We'll see how how he is, how the chemistry is with his teammates, with the coaching staff. Would love to put all this nonsense behind us. Absolutely. A good opportunity for him to step up. Uh, let's go to the defenders now. Outside of Tim Reen, this list really not that surprising. What about you? Who stands out? For me, it's Serginho Dest. Uh, he had a, he's had a, a rough season this year. Uh, left Barcelona, went to Milan on loan. Has not seen his time there go well. Now his future is up in the air. We're, we don't know where he's going to be playing his club football in the next season. Uh, this international break is a, a chance for him to get some actual high-quality football. Um, to get in and around some people that know him, get in a, com a, a situation that's a little bit more comfortable and familiar with him or for him. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm looking for him to, to kind of make a name, uh, make a statement, and, and then I want to see where his future lies ahead. He, he, he's, it's definitely not in Barcelona. It's definitely not in Milan. So where will he be? That's the biggest question for me. All right, and we wrap things up as well with the <clears throat> goalkeepers, though. Matt Turner, no big surprise. Yeah. Horvath and uh, Zach Steffen both out with injury. With yeah. that now, we also bring in Nico Cantor, who is joining us. Nico, when you look at this roster, what's your initial reaction? Hey, guys. Yeah, look, I see a roster that has a lot of talent. I want to make a specific point that because of injury, we don't have Tyler Adams. So who's going to fill that role? And the lack of depth um, in that spot has been a little bit of a worry because every time Tyler Adams isn't in the team, it's not the same team. And there are two candidates to fill that role. It's never going to be like for like to fill what Tyler Adams, to fulfill what Tyler Adams does, really. But you have Johnny Cardoso, as they simply call him in Brazil, Johnny, and Luca de la Torre. Um, Johnny Cardoso has been a stalwart for Inter of Porto Alegre in the Brazilian league. He can play in that spot. He likes playing in that spot. And not only that, he's been scoring goals this season for, for Inter. Um, and, and he is a good defensive presence because without Tyler Adams, there really isn't a midfielder on this list that can give you those uh, th those characteristics in in a holding midfielder in a six because Luca De La Torre is not necessarily uh, a, a player that his first instinct is defensive. He has a really good foot. He's very technical and is a good link-up. We, we saw it in the World Cup qualifiers, him playing in that position. But if I were to give a player a nod, me being the national team coach, this is a, more of a question for, for BJ Callahan in, in the press conference coming up. Who is that player that most resembles Tyler Adams? It's going to be Johnny. Now, now, you said I didn't get a chance to watch Johnny that much uh, for the Internacional, for Inter. Um, you've obviously had a bit more chance to see him. The, the limited time I've seen him with the, the national team, I've liked what I've seen. Do you think he really is the guy to step into that role? At least in the Nations League, he is. And, and he's been routinely on national teams. There are camps that he hasn't been called up, but he's always a question. He's always been a player that has been in the pool, at least. And the thing is, Aaron, that there's... I don't see anybody else like that's a natural CDM that you can slot in there. Um, there. There are center midfielders, but none really that have this defensive nature in him. And when you need somebody to bite, when you need somebody to get stuck in to break up play, it's Johnny Cardoso because Luca de la Torre, like we mentioned, he, he's more technical, more about the link-up play. McKinney's not going to play there. Moose is not going to play there. Reyna's not going to play there. And Alan Sonora is also a creative midfielder. So to really play that true six, that center defensive mid position, 
my first instinct is Johnny. Um, we might see a little bit of Luca De La Torre in the mix as well. Um, but he's really the only the player that fits that profile. Nico, we've seen a lot of team, Tim Weah this season kind of moving around. He's played at left back. We've seen him play on the wings. He has played some striker. Where do you think his best position is for the national team, and where will we see him moving forward? I don't like when people start messing around with the players. Remember back in the day <laughs> where Holter used Tyler Adams as a right back? Yeah. Like, it's interesting, but this isn't club football. you got to play our best players where they play best. Uh, and Timothy Ware, we saw at the World Cup what he could do at right wing. He can stretch opponents. Don't move to me, Ware, from <laughs> right wing. Please, please, please. I, I need him there. I need Pulisic on the left. Fuller and Balogun at the nine. Um, but let's not get too creative because this is a club football where uh, you can work day in, day out on, on complex new strategies. Uh, let's put our best players in the best position to get the most out of them. Obviously, a lot of expectations for Balogun coming in. What do you expect to see from him early on? Or I guess what excites you the most about his potential? The U.S. has locked the nine for so long. Ricardo Pepe was the last person to really hype up the fan base. But he didn't live up to the hype. Um, maybe a... Uh, uh, an expedited move to Germany didn't bode well for him, and he had to go elsewhere to start getting in form. He's in form now, playing for running in, but Faller and Belligan has been putting up incredible numbers in a top five European league uh, with them. So I expect him to start against Mexico. Um, and if he can have an immediate impact, that would be beyond any dream coming true. On morning footy, I alluded, I almost said it, that the U.S. signed an incredible striker or an incredible player because we have so many dual nationals that it it feels like we can go out on the market and, and find players to sign them we, for a we, national we, The summer transfer and, window opened and we got ourselves a Falar and Balogun. <laughs> can you imagine that? The luxury of being an American, of having so many people from multicultural backgrounds, that's what you can do. And, and they wined and dined him and he chose the U.S., which is incredible news for us. And hopefully he can have that impact. It would be it would be amazing. And if not, you have Pepe off the bench. And hey, this must this must be motivating Pepe to prove that what this guy that hasn't played a single minute for the U.S. can just come mm -hmm. here and start and and be better than I am. You know, he must be feeling something. There was su there was such a massive hype train uh, for him, and now it's like it's like the, that meme of the guy with with his girlfriend. He's looking back <laughs> towards the other girl. <laughs> That's what the U.S. fan base did with yeah. Pepe now doing it to, to, to Fuller yeah. and Balogun. Uh, that's fantastic. Now, we've, we've talked a lot about the Leeds pair or the Leeds trio, Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams, and Brendan Aronson. Let's focus in on Brendan Aronson. He, had, he started off the season really, really well with Leeds, cooled off immensely. Obviously, they saw their, their, their side relegated. What do you want to see from him in these, this pair of games, and what do you expect to see from him? It's tough because going into the World Cup six months ago, he was much more in form than Pulisic. And now you look at the team, where do you put him? Because Pulisic is going to start. There's nobody taking away his starting position. Timmy Weah is going to be on the right. And Balogun is going to be the nine. So uh, it's, again, he's going to have to get used to a different role coming off a bench. He, he's done it for Leeds, of course. He hasn't started every single game for Leeds. But that impact off the bench, especially in World Cup qualifiers, we, we saw what he can do off the bench and what he can do when he starts. Um, call me crazy, but if I needed to take a risk at the World Cup, may, maybe Brendan Aronson should have been starting. So he's a quality player, and hopefully he makes a, a, the move to, to a another team in, in top flight football because Leeds got relegated and, and we need him and, and getting the most out of him because he has, he provides such a massive spark. He's so dynamic um, and, and, and he's really one of our brightest players up top. 